the knowledge, Spencer, a boxing commentator, a wealth of experience. Now let's talk about, first of all, what would you reference this fight to in terms of the history of boxing that you've seen? What would you, how would you see this fight in terms of what you've seen in the past? Um, boxing history, I would term this fight, and this is no disrespect to Eric Molina, but I would say 1993 Riddick Bowl versus Jesse Ferguson, or even Riddick Bowl versus um, his first defense, I think that was a, his first defense was against Michael Dokes. Even though Michael Dokes was a superb former world champion, but Michael Dokes got beaten up real bad against Evander Holyfield, which is a classic fight. So maybe in terms, something maybe along those lines where we think, well, why is he fighting him? Or, oh my word, and stuff like that. But what we have to recognize is the fact that the man does come to fight. And he's proven that time and time again. He's had a very, very good win over Thomas Adamek. Even though it was an old Thomas Adamek, but it was still a good Thomas Adamek. And he did well with Deontay Wilder. So I think American TV are saying, let's look at this as the barometer. Because we can't sell two Brits in America. So we need an American in. So which Americans are available? They're going through the list and they think, well, we can't find no one. And Eddie Hearns also got to play it safe and say, okay, then. Well, this guy has been cockily calling out um, any one of our British fighters and put him with AJ. Does he validate? He's still got a, a high ranking in the IBF, so therefore he validates to fight for a title. And that's what's happened. It's nothing bad. We Listen, we got to watch Anthony Joshua. And we got to watch Anthony Joshua because he brings out everybody. Look how many people have come out just to hear a press conference. This room's, we had a cacophony of people. It's um, the major thing now is that the event has to live up to substance. Andy Josh has just met the steamrollers guy because we're expecting to steamroll this guy. Steamroll him because he's a no-win situation. Andy Joshua goes eight, eight, nine rounds with this guy. Oh, Andy Joshua's not all cracked up till he's going to be. Oh, Deontay Wilder took him out in eight, nine. Do you understand? Andy Joshua goes to steamroll this guy. Oh, I've just paid me. No, look at it as what it is. This is an event. It's an event. It's like going out to listen to Jay-Z. When Jay-Z came over to the old 2 Jay-Z had the crowd rocking like nobody's business, and this is exactly the same thing. Now, Anthony was looking at Klitschko in the first place, but the Klitschko fight couldn't have been made for di different reasons. WBA didn't sanction it or whatever. He's still talking about Klitschko. Is Anthony in danger of overlooking Eric Molina's uh, you know, prowess? If there's anybody else, I'd say yes, he is. But I know Anthony very well. And he's a guy that won't be overlooking the, uh, the task at hand. He'll be solely concentrating on dealing with Eric Molina. And I, I, I think that Eric Molina is, is tough because he can punch. And even on the fights that he's lost, he's, he's, he's lashed out. The fight where he got knocked out against uh, Chris Ariola in 2012. First round, but before he got knocked out, he give it to Eric Molina. I mean, so he give it to um, Ariola. So that's that's how he fights. He's brave like that. So I rate him for his bravery. I rate him for how he comes out and fights. And he won't be overlooking him. And finally, we've got uh, uh, Wild uh, Dillian White fighting Derek Chisora on this. What exactly are you expecting from these guys? Both guys are hotheads. They know how to talk a, talk a good game. But in terms of a fight, Chisora has lost six straight. How does he come into a fight like this, knowing that he's got that kind of record behind no, him? He's, a, he's got six losses on his record. He's lost six straight. He's had two fights prior to, to losing. Yeah. Derek Chisora is a wildly old, experienced fighter now. He's been there, right? On the other hand, in Dylan White, Dylan White is looking to, to reach that mountain top. So if you want to reach that mountain top, you're going to have to get past people like uh, Derek Cesura. But it's not only just getting past them, you have to look good in doing it. And do I believe that um, Dylan White can look good in, in this fight? It's not going to be an easy fight. Here we've got two men that badly want it. Derek Cesura knows that he's in last chance saloon, right? So he's, he's ordered them drinks. Them drinks have been ordered. But, and he knows that I want to drink this drink as much as I can and just get it down me. And, and, and with Dylan White, Dylan White knows like I've had three fights since losing to Anthony Joshua. I need to impress now because I've got my new trainer in Mark Tibbs, the son of Jimmy Tibbs, a legendary trainer. I have to be impressive now because my, my tutelage of learning, it, it should be, I should be ready now. So we should see a more complete Dylan White. I, I tip Dylan White to win this fight, but Dylan White has to be very, very wary of those overhand rights that Derek, Derek gets in close, he throws overhand, roll, overhand right shots, which is susceptible to sometimes Dylan throws his, his, his left jab from a low guard. So he's throwing it from a low guard, you're leaving yourself susceptible to hitting by a right hand. So it's going to be entertaining. This fight's got two ways. This fight could either be Mike Tyson versus um, James Bond, Crusher Smith. I think that was in 87, which was a ball fest. Or this fight could be 
George Foreman versus Ron Lau, I think that was in 76, when them two just had a war, and it, we still talk about that fight today. So it's, 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 one of the, it's one of the two. And I will go for it being the latter, in being that it will be a war, because they don't like each other. It kicked off yesterday in Sky. Thank God that the security were there to, to part these guys, because it could have got serious. And I just believe that styles make fights, and the style of Dylan White should be, he's a younger, fresher man, so he should get the victory. But you know what? I love both of them, my brothers, both of them. Thank you very much for speaking to us. No, no, let me tell you this now, before we start. Listen, um, keep on doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Factory 78, right? Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on pushing forward. It's loads of times that like, we don't push forward, or we sometimes we just need that, emph that, that emphasis to keep on going. I'm trying to tell people that I never came from a lot. I'm right, but for the grace of God, I got free shows on Sky. I got ringside toe-to-toe. Uh, uh, -to -toe. I got hashtag toe-to-toe, -to -toe and I got the boxing podcast. For the grace of God, I'm saying the, the more that you keep on trying to do something is the more that it comes a, uh, uh, prevalent in your life. Do you understand? And the thing about it is this, like in the Apostle Paul in the Bible, it says like, thou shalt call for a thing that be not as though they are. you got to proclaim these things. When you're proclaiming these things, you're not proclaiming these things to be cocky. You're proclaiming these things because you want to draw these things into your life. Do you know what I mean? Never stop making, never stop pushing forward, never stop. Do you understand? And never, and never think, well, when I get this, this and this, I'm going to be happy. It doesn't work like that. I'm going to tell you this now, that happiness is not a destination, it's your way of life. From when you wake up in the morning, you're meant to be happy. From when you, in the daytime, you're meant to be happy. When you go to bed, you're meant to be happy. Reason why? Because that is the energy that you're bringing to you. Let everyone feel your glow so much that they be inspired. You know what? I just want to be like, I just want to be like, showy man, because how, how you're rolling, that's how you got to do it. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, the concept of God is real, but without human beings here, God cannot resonate within us if we don't accept God to resonate within us because, as it says in Psalms 82, and ye are gods, but you will die as men. So what is that trying to tell you? Say, you're God. You're God. Not in the fact that you're the big G God. No, but you're God. You're God by your works. By your works, by your deeds. Let your deeds be good. Stay away from negative people and keep pushing forward. I love what you're doing. Thank you very much, brother.